In this lesson, I'm going to do my best to explain integration by parts, which is basically a reverse product rule for integration. So if we go back to what the derivative of two functions multiplied together is, in other words, when remember when you were doing um, learning about taking the derivative of a product, you'd have something like x cos x or 2x cos x, or something that's a product of two separate functions. So we said, if you're taking the product of two terms, f at x, g at x, then it's the first times the derivative of the second plus the derivative of the first times the second. So I'm sure you're quite familiar with the product rule from calculus, and now we're going to integrate it. So if this is the derivative of this, then the integral of the derivative has to give us f at x times g at x, right? So I'm just going backwards. So this says that if I take the integral of this side of the equation, f at x g prime x dx plus f prime x gx, now I just separated these by putting the integral of each of these, which is quite acceptable that has to be equal to f at x, g at x. So if we arrange, simply rearrange this equation, I would get the integral of f at x, g prime x dx, so I'm keeping this one. I'm gonna say that's equal to this minus this one. So that's all I'm doing here, okay? So now you notice that this is f at x, g at x, but I'm the integral of f at x, one is going to be the original function, the other is going to be the derivative. So when we go back to, if, if we just change this pattern, instead of having all these f at x and g at x's, and if we let f at x be u and g at x be v, this is probably what you're more familiar with seeing from your lesson. So it says that the integral of u dv is equal to, so you're identifying one of those parts as the derivative and one as not the derivative, is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. And this is going to become much more clear as we go through a few examples. Now the pattern that we're following to do this part of the equation, I'm saying let u be something and dv be the other thing. So I have to choose one of these two parts of my integral to be a derivative and one to not be. One I'm going to take the derivative of, the other I'm going to take the integral of. So the pattern that you're going to follow, and, and as we go through the examples, this become much more clear. If one is u and the other is dv, I take the derivative of one of them, I take the integral of the other. And these little arrows, if you write it out like this, it's gonna be really simple for you to say, I'm going to do u, v, minus, that's the part you have to remember, u, v, minus, v, the integral of v, du. Very simple, okay, it's right there for you. Now another little trick to help you decide which one of these little functions am I going to choose to be u and which one am I going to choose to be v? You want to choose u to be something that's easily differentiated. You can take the derivative of it easily and choose v that is something that is readily integrated. So we'll see these examples as we go through. So the basically a rule that you can use to help you is this Liet rule, or you could say late because I'm sure some of you won't be doing inverse trig functions. So we're going to pick u to be a log, an inverse trig, and then algebraic trig or exponential. So let's go to this first example, and this is going to help make everything very clear, I hope. Okay, so I'm going to choose one of these. So this is a product, right? So it's a product rule that's going to require me to use this integration by parts. 
So I'm going to pick, I'm looking at these, I have x and I have e to the x. So which one should I use to be u? Well, according to my rule here, I choose u to be a logarithm. I don't have a log function. I don't have an inverse trig. I don't have, oh, I have algebra, right? Algebra would be this x. The exponential would be my e to the x here. So I'm going to use x to be my u, and I'm going to use e at x to be my, I'm trying to find my pen, e to the x to be my, it's a different color. This is going to be dv, okay, dv. So like I said, one of them I'm going to take the derivative of, the other I'm going to take the integral of. So I'm going to say let u equal x. So du is going to be 1 dx. Don't forget the dx. So the derivative of x is 1. So if I have dv equals e to the x, the v is going to be also e to the x because the derivative of e to the x is e to the x and the derivative is the other way around. Now there is a plus c in here, but we won't worry about that until we plug it in. Okay, so now I'm going to find the integral of x e to the x, and I'm going to write that out here. I'll write it out. I better use a pencil. So I'm going to do the integral of x e to the x dx is going to be, so the pattern, like I said, we're going to just make a little arrows here. So I'm going to do this one times this one minus the integral of those ones. So this is my integral part, minus the integral. Okay, so let's watch what happens here. This magic happens. So I'm going to do x, so it's uv, so I'm doing uv, that's on this diagonal, so x e to the x, x e to the x minus the integral of, oh, I should have had a dx in here somewhere, right? Um, no, no, it's okay. So I go e to the x and then dx. So e to the x dx, the dx, you have to make sure you have it here. Okay, so now I'm just going to take the integral of this part. So I have, this is going to be x e to the x minus, what's the integral of e to the x? e to the x plus c. Now you may also write that out as um, e to the x times x minus 1 plus c if you want to get a little fancy. But that's all you have to do. Okay, so let's do some more because practice is what it's all about. Oh, right, this is where the arrow went through the page, so I have to get another one. Okay, so let's find the integral of x times the cos of 3x. So right away, you see this is a product rule, which requires you to use our new formula for integration by parts. So I'm going to decide what u is going to be and what v is going to be. So I'm going to let u, now remember the rule, I'll just write it up here, l-i-a-t-e. So I don't have logs, I don't have inverse trigs, but I have algebra, that's my x, so I'm going to let u be x, so du is going to be dx. Derivative of x is 1 dx. I'm going to let this, this is my u, and the green one here, I'm going to change color, this is going to be my dv. So dv is cos 3x. What's the integral of cos 3x? Well, the derivative would be, um, I'm thinking backwards here, so sine goes to cos, so it's positive sine, and I have to do one third of that to make up for the derivative of the 3x part. So if I took the derivative of this, I would have cos 3x times 3, 3 times a third would give me the 1. So now that I've got my two... Um, my little box is here set. I'm going to use the arrow method. So I'm going to do u 
times v minus the integral of these two together. So this isn't so bad, right? It looks much more difficult than it is because it's all that formula stuff. Okay, so I'm going to do uv. So I'm just going to write this up really small here. Minus the integral of v du. Right? That's what we're doing. So I'm going to do u times v. So u times v. That's this, this, sorry, this times this. I'm looking up to make sure that um, I'm in focus and on the page and kind of lost my spot here. So u times v, that's going to be one third x. So one third x sine three x. I'm just kind of simplifying it as I'm writing it out. So that's my uv. Now minus the integral of v du. So one third sine three x dx. Okay, so now remember that if it's the integral of a constant, you can take the constant out. I could put this out front. And I'm going to do that when I take the integral. So I have one third x sine three x. Now when I take the integral of sine of three x, I'm going to have one third cos three x minus one third, right? It's going to be negative. So that's going to make this positive. Let me explain that again. So this is going to be 1 9th cos 3x plus c. Okay, so remember the, if I took the derivative of cos, I would get negative sine. So that negative made this positive. And the 3x, I had to multiply by 1 third. So I did 1 third times 1 third to give me 1 9th. So taking the derivative of this, let's go backwards just to triple check. But we know we're right. Derivative of cos x is negative sine 3x times 3 and 3 times a ninth gives me a third. And don't forget your plus c in the end here. Okay, example 3. This time I have x squared sine 3x dx. And again, using our rule that I had way up here, I don't have any logs. I don't have any inverse trigs. I have an algebraic term. That's my x squared and then trig, so I pick the x squared to be u. I'm going to write it up here a bit. Let u be equal to x squared. So du is going to be 2x dx, right? And if I do dv, I'm going to let the other term be dv. So dv is sine 3x. So v is going to be 1 third. Now, if I do cos 3x, do I have the right sign? So you always check because you know the derivative of cos would be negative sign. So if I do, um, if cos goes to negative sign, then I need a negative here. So I, so I do the cos of 3x would be negative sign, negative, negative, positive. 3 times a third gets rid of that fraction. Okay, so now I'm going to do my little a little pattern. So I'm going to go this way and I'm going to go this way. And that's going to be minus the integral. Okay. So here we go. Now we've got this is going to be equal to u times v. So minus one third x squared cos 3x. So we're okay with that. And now I'm going to add because it's going to be minus a minus here. So minus a minus is going to be one third. And I'm going to write the integral after that because I'm taking, well, actually I could take out two thirds because it's going to be a two, right? Um, can we do that all at once? Sure we can. So two thirds, the integral of x cos three x. Okay, just to double check now for you, I did minus a third times two, gave me minus two thirds times the negative, made this positive, and then I had x cos 3x and dx. Okay, so now I'm all set to take the integral, but look, I've got x cos 3x. 
So that's another integration by parts. So it's like I did the product rule, I reversed it, and now I still have another product. So sad story, but the good news is that we already did this in the question above, so we don't have to rewrite what are we going to let be equal to u and v and all that stuff. So I'm just going to write two thirds here. And I know that the integral of x cos 3x is all of this. All right, so one third. I'm just going to put a big bracket here and I'm going to copy what we did above. So if you get to that point, and I think I do one the next or the last one I do has that kind of situation. So I have one ninth cos 3x plus c. And now I have to multiply each of these by two thirds. And we're going to be all done. So minus one third x squared cos 3x plus 2 ninths x sine x plus 2 over 27, a ninth times 2 thirds, multiply tops and bottoms, cos 3x. And I could say 2 thirds times the c. That's not really necessary because two-thirds times any constant is just the constant increase times two-thirds. So we could just call it k, or maybe you should change it because it's really two-thirds c. So let's just eat that be equal to k and leave it like that. Okay, so now we've got two examples, three examples. This one, we kind of got to cheat a bit because the half the answer was already up here. Okay, so I have two more. x squared ln x. Okay, again, the first thing we need to do is identify which of these is going to be our u, which is going to be our, our um, dv. So remember the little pattern, L-I-A-T-E. The first one is log. Oh, so this time we should pick this one to be u and this one to be dv. Okay? Okay. You're still with me. So remember that's because this one was first. Logs. So lawn. Um, the other thing is that uh, the, the integral of ln x isn't something that's so easy to do, but the derivative of ln x is really simple, right? Okay, so we're going to say let u be equal to ln x. So that means du is 1 over x dx. We know the derivative of ln x, very easy to do. And we're going to say um, dv is going to be x squared. So v is going to be 1 third x cubed plus c. But we'll get that when we do the, the work here. Okay, so now again, we're going to do arrow, arrow. That will help you just to keep things really easy. So I have one third ln x x cubed. So one third ln x. Um, and my, maybe we should have written x cubed ln x. It just makes things prettier. Okay, so I'm going to do x cubed ln x. So that's the first part minus the integral and it's this one times this one. So a third times one, well, let's look here. The x is going to go into this x two times. So I have one third x squared dx. One third x squared dx. Okay, so now we've got this. This is going to be easy to finish. Minus, so the integral of x squared, I add one, I divide by three. So that's one ninth x cubed. 1 ninth x cubed plus c. I guess you could go through and take the derivative and see if you get this, right? You should. But this is going to be a product rule when you take the derivative. First time derivative of the second plus second times derivative first. That sort of work. Okay, let's take a look at this one because it's a little bit trickier. So it says e to the x sine x dx. Now, back to the rules of L-I-A-T-E. We don't have L, we don't have I, we have A, but we do have T. So log, what we want to use for our 
u here. Okay, let's let u equal exponentials. That would have been less. So u should be sine x. Actually, with this one, it doesn't really matter which one you pick. I did it the other way around when I when I was doing my example, and it turned out just fine. You can do it the other way, but let's do it this way because um, it's straight in my mind this way. So I'm breaking my own rule here, but it, it'll still work. Maybe I could do it in another video. Okay, so I'm going to let u be e to the x and du be e to the x sine x. Maybe I could do it the other way. No, I'm not going to, but you can try it. Okay, you try it. Let me know if you found it easier. So if dv is sine x, then v is going to be negative cos x, right? Because the derivative of cos is sine. The derivative of cos is negative sine, so it has to be a negative cos x. Okay, go on the diagonals here, our little arrows. So this is going to be negative e to the x cos x. So that's this times this one minus the integral of this times this. So this is negative. That's going to make this positive. So e to the x cos x dx. Oh my goodness. What do we have here now? Because we have e to the x cos x. So we're going to have to do this again a second time. So for this one, I'm going to let u be e to the x again. And du is going to be e to the x dx. And dv is going to be cos x. And the integral of cos x is sine x, because the derivative of sine x is cos x. I always like to check that, because especially with the signs, like the S-I-G-N signs, right? Okay, so now I've got two parts here. I'm going to have um, a negative e to the x. How come I got positive when I did that? I shouldn't have. I should have got negative. Okay, so I'm just going to continue. e to the x cos x. And now I have another e to the x sine x. So I'm doing this times this minus the integral of e to the x sine x, e to the x sine x dx. Oh goodness gracious, right? Because now we've got a bit of a mess going on here because we have we have this all over again. So what are we going to do? What is a girl to do? So what we should do now is take a look at, let's write it all out. So I have the integral of e to the x sine x dx equals negative e to the x cos x. Did anybody see a mistake there? I have a feeling I made a little slip somewhere. Sine x minus the integral of e to the x sine x dx. And I think you can see at this point that what's going to happen is that you're going to get into a bit of a circle, right? You're going to keep, this is going to be go to cos x, you're going to add a cos, you're going to subtract a sine x. So at this point, when I see that this is actually the very same as this, if I simply add, and this is where, you know, you might not have seen this before, but once you see it once, you've got it nailed. So if I add, ooh, that rolled right over the paper. If I add an e to the x sine x dx to both sides of this equation, so I'm going to do this e to the x sine x dx, because I'm recognizing that I'm going to be stuck in a circle here. And I'm going to add it on this side as well. So, hmm, don't have enough room, but I, I can fix it, fix it just like that. Okay, so if I add these on both sides of the equation, you're going to see this is going to go away, but I'm going to have two of these on this side. So I'm going to have 2 integral e to the x sine x dx. And I know you're going to say, but we didn't want 2. We wanted 1. 
and that's okay because we're going to fix that in just a minute here and then I have I'm going to write it the other way I'm going to put e to the x sine x first minus e to the x cos x plus c I should have added a plus c in here back here okay so now I've got all this set up because I've this has been eliminated. I have two of these. I only want one. So all you have to do is divide by two. So I'll have e to the x sine x dx is equal to, I'm dividing this by two, so one half e to the x sine x minus one half e to the x cos x plus, you could say one half c or just c. It's the same thing. Okay, so that, that's one that might kind of stump you. It's a little bit crazy. Um, and that's it for this lesson. And I hope that helped you out. If you see any mistakes or something, please leave comments below. Um, and I hope you learned something from me today. Please like, share, comment, and tell your friends to watch. Thanks for watching. Bye.